get nervous. Uh, true airspeed 67 and indicated airspeed 62, that's pretty good. They'll get nervous flying over those power lines with my ballooning experience. Yeah. We didn't have the control to avoid them. So we made it a point. It's still good to kind of watch out for them. Made it a point to always be rising slightly over them. All right. Yeah, but you don't want to be descending gradually as you head towards the lines. Uh, That's a pretty runway. Looks there it is. Beautiful and new. Within the last couple of years or even Yeah. They just re uh, they put new they put coal tar oil, you know, on top of the surface. Uh, just uh, I think it was this year or last year and repainted it again. So I mean they've kept it up real nice. It's a pretty new runway, but you know, resurfaced again just last year, I think. What would you estimate our distance right now from the touchdown? Uh, about uh, two and a half miles, three miles. Closer to two miles. It's a little tricky sometimes when you're when I'm at the lower altitudes. It's harder for me to tell. It looks further away than it, should, it would if I were at higher altitude, just because I can tell how long the runway is, and this way I can't. It looks it gets shrunk. Yeah. Still looking for a windsock. Don't see it over there. There's one on your left, uh, kind of, you can see the orange. I know where it's supposed to be, I just can't yeah, see it. Yeah, it's hard to see it. Okay, so see the water over here? That gives us a slight wind into our face is all, not very much to worry about. What we want. Yep, that's good. Centered on this a little better. Just a little slow, just start adding a little power. You're down to 40, so add a bit more power, lift the nose down again. Just level it out. Yeah, there you go. That's better. And let it sink down. And just remember to look up as you come as you get close to the ground, so you kind of feel the runway coming up around your peripheral vision is when you get close. So let it sink. Don't push it for it, just hold it level and let it pull a little throttle out. Nice big runway, so no worries. A little less throttle. Keep the nose up. Yeah, I'm looking good right there. Just wait for it to start to sink. There you go, feeling it sink. So wait for it to sink down a little bit. Just wait for it, get a little closer. There, now start just slowly pitching up every time it tries to go down. Looking down the runway. More and more and more and more and more. Good. Yeah. Nice. All right, throttling up. Hold that stick a little left. There you go.
turn again. Look at left and turn left again. Okay, feel it warming up already. So we've gone up six degrees already. in this house here, should I swing uh, right or left, would you recommend, or just... I just turn before it is fine. Okay. I just go up to about the middle of this field and turn left. Okay. Yeah, good, making your descent right here, that's perfect. Okay, look at left, and... Yeah, lift the nose just a hair, take a little power out. Turn left again. down a little bit. Look at left and turn left for final. Yep, get her all lined up and then just aim for your target with your throttle. Bad. So set your speed first, pitch up a little bit, and back in your throttle down because you feel like you need to push over. There you go, good. That's the ticket. 55, 60 is good. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Even I think this one reads a little bit low, so even 50 is okay. Uh, back in the throttle down a little bit as you come down. Remember, our goal is just to get in the ground effect to start out with. Cut it down in. Don't look too close. Remember, use that peripheral vision for okay. feeling a little, a little slow for that altitude. So I just put a little throttle in. I'm holding a little left stick there now. So i pitching up, looking further away. Keep pitching up, keep pitching up, keep pitching up. That's pretty flat, right? And I was pushing left to keep it from coming over to the right side. I would just find it. Yeah. Set it down to predetermined location a little bit yeah, more. You're, you're trying to be perfect already. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's a that's a good thing, you know. That's good to strive for perfection. But I can, you know, pick a different touchdown point aside from the. Yeah. It's all right. Pick your touchdown point. But if you at this point, we're not too worried about hitting it exactly. Aim for it as we come down, but at then when we get into ground effect, don't worry about it. Okay. Okay. Left and turn and left again. Once we're all happy with, you know, our quality of our landings, then we're going to start tightening up on our landing spot. So we'll try and say, okay, we're going to land on this spot or we're going to do a go around one or the other. Okay. And looking downwind, turn it downwind. Poplar trees around his house so he can have a nice wind break. He's got like two dozen campers. <laughs> Camper collector. Yeah.
final. Use a throttle to control altitude. Yep. Path, basically. So you know, if you wanted to aim for the numbers, that'd be a good, good thing. So we just use our throttle to make it get there. And keep our speed about 50. That's perfect. So don't let the nose come up any. So if you feel like you want more distance, you'll just add throttle. But it looks pretty good to me right here where we are. Okay. Just hold in speed, let the nose down just a hair. There you go. And right here, I'd start taking just a little throttle out. Little right pedal. Okay, right pedal, left stick. Huh? That's it, good. Let it keep coming down, we'll take a little more throttle out. Let the nose stay down. Let it stay down until we get close. When it feels like the runway edges start coming up, that's when I start pitching about right here. Gently at first, wait for it, then a little more, and wait for it, and a little more, and more, and more, and more. Good. And all the way up. That was good. Still, I was pushing just a little left. gallons left. It takes about 20 minutes, which is, we figure, half hour just for safety. It takes 25 minutes, uh, was what we said last time. All right. So half hour is about four gallons of gas, which would put us about eight gallons when we get close to home. So and we'll have a few extra runs around the pattern on that end. Okay. Just want to head straight back then or take one more landing and head back? Over? Yeah, we'll go back. Okay. Turn early, that's okay. Okay. I got plenty of altitude, so. I can left and turn left. So I was trying to get air speed up a little bit more. Yeah, not too much. Looks good. Just a lazy amount of smoke coming out of the. Yeah. It was a teeny tailwind going home. You say fuel is, would be available, have gas available there. Is so it just a self service area? There's not yeah. demand all the time right Just a credit card and off you go. Like the gas station. Occasional use of that is not terribly harmful to your plugs or your oxygen sensor, but you wouldn't get in the habit of it then. Huh? Well, I mean, every time you use it, it puts lead on the spark plugs and on the O2 sensor. So eventually enough will collect on the O2 sensor that it doesn't work anymore. It's not a huge deal, but the engine will just go into open loop mode. So then you will always run rich. So it's, it's not going to cause a huge problem, but... It will give you less fuel economy. How would I detect that rich condition? Uh, yeah, it's really hard to tell. But you can see it uh, uh, blacker exhaust okay. coatings and things like that. Um, no way from in here. I'd have to examine the engine. Okay. Yeah, really no way to tell. Um, you can plug in the OBD2 reader, and it will tell you if the oxygen sensor is having trouble. It'd probably be a good thing to do if you if you do occasionally run leaded fuel. One, don't use uh, synthetic oils if you're going to run leaded fuel. It doesn't suspend the oil. Okay. And uh, but because the synthetic blends were made after cars quit running lead, so they didn't need to suspend the oil oh. or the lead. So um, anyway, and then uh, the other thing you don't want to well you'll have to do is change plugs more often. And probably check that uh, the code reader to see if your O2 sensor is plugged up. One of these days before you ship, to get this home, I'd like to ask you to show me how to do that with the code reader. Yeah, it's, there's a plug right here. This plugs right in. I have one that's just a little bitty thing that you, you put an SD card in, and it's just a logger. 
so you can just plug it in huh. and fly your flights and pull the, the card out and check and see if there are any codes while you're you're flying. So huh. you could kind of log your data as you go if you had something like that. That'd be nice. Yeah, you don't need it every day, but you know, what, right as you're getting ready to change your oil and stuff, you could plug it in, plug that in, and say. side of the freeway. That looks like a good gravel pit to me. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's put their cattle farm right there, but they've got a nice little gravel pit started. I've done the same thing on this drainage area here. <laughs> yeah. There's mountains and mountains of pre-crushed gravel. Is this a water treatment uh, facility for this little community, you think? Uh, or no, or I think that's irrigation, fund? yeah. Okay. For the, the farmers right here. Huh. Now you put a Usually they'll put the clay in the bottom and then a liner. You can see the black liner, like a PVC liner, to keep the water from flowing out the bottom. Huh. Well, because they got all this gravel, right? So it just go pretty porous surface, yeah. but it looks like they've got some nicely crushed gravel. That makes it cheaper. <laughs> yeah. I think gravel pits are pretty ugly. to collect all of the topsoils off in piles so they can rehab it when they're done. I'm going to cut the engine RPM back a little couple of hundred here just because we're climbing as much sure. as we We're good. Whatever makes it work, right? Uh, just a little over, just ranging between 68 and 72. On the uh, air temperature now. And we go up, it gets a little cooler, that's kind of nice. Almost perfect. like that and then they'll just pump water into it all day long you know because the well won't produce that much water that they need for their huh. irrigation pump and then they'll put a big pump in it to pressurize the lines and run all these gigantic pivot lines out huh. and he's watering the billboard yeah I see <laughs> <laughs> so striking from the air way up there. I've not seen one up close like this. See how they really operate. Yeah, kind of cool. <laughs> Those are the convenient ones because the, the farmer doesn't have to move them back and forth across the field or take them apart and put them together as they go. Yeah. These big long ones like this one here, those aren't nearly as much fun. You gotta run your lines to them, let them run back and forth, change the directions. See, he's gotta disconnect parts.
parts of it, reconnect parts of it every time he waters his field. This early in the day, would we still feel any updrafts and downdrafts around the, near the mountain? As long as we have a flow to the west, I mean from the west. But today we're not going to have very much. It's really, really quite mild. So if you want to go over there, you can feel it out. Okay. It's really going to be probably minimal. There's a little wind on the pond. Next month when you come out, all the trees will be turning orange again. Yeah, I bet, bet it's beautiful. And this year should be pretty good because we had a good water year. Just let the nose down a little bit. You're trying to climb over the hill. Doesn't work, does it? <laughs> Not very well. Lots of juniper over here, and also the oaks. And my guess is you're, yeah, there you go. A little, feel a little up. And a gentle push. The quicker the rise is, and the tighter you are to it, the more you're going to get that. Also, as you go up the hill, it kind of amplifies because it starts slow at the bottom and gets gradually faster and faster and faster as you move up the terrain. Ooh, I can feel it. Yeah. It's a lot cooler here. Uh -huh. Yes. 61 to 67 uh -huh. over here. Crazy. You could just feel that temperature change. Though. Oh, yeah. That's something. You can use that to either gain speed or gain altitude, depending on what you need. It'll switch back to. Reviewing that um, procedure manual, I guess that you'd give me a copy of, have like 50 pages in it. Yeah, the gigantic and, thing. And uh, yeah, it's very well written. I appreciate it. I, I noticed the numbers in terms of speeds, though, tend to be a little higher than we see here. Was that just kind of a national average, or or a lighter yeah. lighter weight uh, gyro that you were? I think yours indicates a little slow. Okay. Compared to what I've seen on others, yours may be truer to actual speed. I mean. Yours showing 59 right now, and it's showing a true airspeed of 67, so it's seven knots faster on your true airspeed. But when we show ground speed, yours always shows a little high. Okay. So I think yours indicates just a little slow. All right. We could adjust that. But yeah, it's just kind of an average. Okay. Spanish Air Traffic Helicopter, six switch mic is six and a half miles to the southeast over I-15, uh, climbing to 6,000. Uh, we'll be maneuvering from 6,000 to 5,500. Spanish area traffic. Spanish Park area traffic to airplane 247 out for Whiskey. We're just over the top of Santa Quinn, headed northbound for Spanish Park. Helicopter six switch mic is uh, five and a half miles over. Wow. 
just, you just hold it and wait on the guns that. 5,500 to 6,000. Spanish area traffic. The worst thing to do when that happens is to shove the nose over. The best thing to do is just kind of ride it out. Okay. If you feel like you need to do something, you can just give a little back pressure and then just hold it and wait. Okay. It's futile trying to correct for it. It'll be over by the time you... Well, you'll overcorrect. Exactly. Besides that, it's been, you've got a big updraft and there's going to be a big drown, downdraft somewhere close to it. So yeah. if, if you just happen to hit the downdraft as well as shove the stick over, then it might be yeah. dangerous. It magnified the whole problem. Okay. Yeah. This is Payson. Payson, Payson. Stay over here on this right side, even over the community rather than on the industrial. Yeah, you're high enough, that's okay. okay. You're a thousand Down. feet up, so a little bit more, 1100 feet. Okay. Do your trick here, the cool off. Yeah, the exactly. Here. It's a good radiator. Sometimes I'll just stick my knee out to get the air to come in. Great little turbulent flow there. <laughs> it cools you right off. This is great with the doors off, though. Why? Wow, you can see so much more clearly. <laughs> it's kind of fun. You can see it right down to the ground. Oh, the details. Nice little pet dog out there. And it was... Fast traffic sound of Wolf 14, north side of West Mountain, um, headed back towards Provo. Last call. There's the helicopter. Yeah, if you can read the tail numbers, then you're really close. <laughs> well, at least he's not coming right at you if you can read the tail numbers here. Yeah, that's true. See what color his high eyes or hair are, then you have a problem. <laughs> Touch and goes on this end, that's fine. You never 
know what's going to happen. Get a win, big win, pick up or something. Then. It normally wouldn't, but it can happen. I've seen it happen. Just some localized thing that just slows you down. And we're slow enough that just a little wind change makes a big difference. Good point. And it's nice to be able to determine your direction of flight no matter what the wind does though. Well, not no matter what, but with a pretty good range. Know that even if you get stuck in 80 knots of wind, you can still fly. <laughs> yes, we, I saw that firsthand. That was impressive. Yeah, that was very fun. It was a little worrisome because I knew if we kicked up very much more, if we got another five knots or so of wind, we would back up over the mountain. The backward, that's right. And then once we get close to the mountain, it just accelerates the air. So then we end up on the other side. <laughs> That's why I kept pushing forward to go down. Because we stay low, then we can stay at the lower wind speeds. Get down into the friction of the ground and let it slow us down some more. Oh, that was a great lesson. And the other thing is, don't panic, just keep thinking. Exactly. us in front of us and then he's come around behind is going to come up 